Hey guys, Tyrant up here, bring you a 2v2 today. We are on Elst outskirts. Player today spawning on the left. Google Translate tells me this is Walnut. Playing with OKW, who has Breakthrough, Overwatch, and Elite Armored. Team with him, Flatchy, with Osir, who has Blitzkrieg, Storm, and Jaeger Armor. On the right, Kozak with Soviets has Guard Rifle, Combined Arms, Guard Motor, and Shock Rifle Frontline. And finally, Master Steve with US Forces locking into Heavy Cavalry. This is a Patreon backer submitted game. Random teams on both sides. Walnut rank uh, 77, Flatchy 175, Kozak 491, and Master Steve 66. Two Empire is rushing in here. Pretty close matchup. Second rifle arrives though to win. Might even be able to complete the sandbags here if he's quick on the right click to continue construction on it. No, it's going to run past it and not complete it. Through a battle for the garrison, but jumped out with the rear echelon, I think. And lost control of it to the folk screen it is. This thing's a bit harder over there. Meanwhile, uh, no machine gun stuff for Flatchy. Just three green ears. Got a third Fox screen here coming in from Walnut. Three conscripts from Kozak. Pretty uh, standard stuff, apart from the uh, no machine gun. Wow, Flatchy goes for a machine gun now. Hmm. Okay. It's ready to use. I think it's just, you know, just timing wise, it just works out so much better if you go for an MG42 immediately. It's not like Green Deers are so strong. Getting three of them is so good. This is going to be like a maybe no machine gun until after tier two kind of build, but no. The mortar from uh, Master Steve, maybe hoping to flush units out of this building, which can be a bit of a headache. He'll end up delaying his office attack though. But he ends up uh, getting into the building. No. Oh boy. Oh yeah, he needed to give a new order. Because when he gave an order to right click to get into the building, this was the closest door, so they. <laughs> They went around the long way. Uh, unfortunate. Let's how the pathfinding is. Sees the closest door and tries to go for that one. But closest door as the crow flies, not in terms of the actual pathfinding to get there. Stone is getting a little bit of cover, but do get forced off the center. Did manage to wire off all of those sandbags though. Pretty good for the Axis. Opportunity is looking to set up a bit of a two-on-one here potentially. Rifeman going for the cutoff. Nope, they're going to take up a heavy cover position. Conscripts looking for some cover themselves, but there's the machine gun. Rifeman have to get out of there. Well, looks like Conscript's having some trouble in the north as well for Kozak. Looks like he decided to go for tier 2 into a Maxim. Slowed his momentum a little bit at this stage. So has medics as well, so... Oh, good hit from the mortar. Forces that squad away. Ooh, out on the uh, road there, Kozak. Taking some massive damage. Just ran off to the side here to the light cover. Might have actually been able to force this green deer away. Did he nearly get squad wipes? Mortar pushing up with the rifleman. Got some sandbags down. Master Steve in his good positions. Try to get some up on the 
VP Two as well, times. but interrupted now by the Sturmpires rushing in. Jumps bastards. back into the building. Sturmpires give up the chase. Pretty good reactions both sides. We've got Battle Group from Walnuts. T2 coming up now from Flatchy. Maybe a touch late if you wanted to go for a 2 2 2 rush. Could already have 2 2 2 completed by about now. The enemy is attempting to steal our sector. Looks like he's uh, power building a bunker though. Gonna try to get some healing going. And it's still gonna be a 2 2 2, but yeah, I mean, missing this timing window. With that tech construction. Nice captain from Master Steve. Trying to maintain control of this building. Looks like the mortar getting a bit of smoke down on the machine gun. Two squads inside the building. To jump out to dodge the incendiary grenade. The squad, though, jumped out the wrong door. That seems a little bit awkward for them. Fireman too low to win this fight as well. Gets out of there at a reasonable timing. Hopefully, he doesn't drop too many models. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. He's going for an ambulance. Could maybe have made use of his teammates' healing though instead, if he needed to uh, delay. But he's already got. Uh, a capture point. Decent base of uh, units together. Wire goes off. Anti tank grenade from the conscripts. Gonna slow down that 222. Two, two. So we got the Jaeger command squad from Flatchy. Tries to go for, for a rifle nade into the retreat. Slightly mistargets it. Decent attempt. They were pretty clumped up as well. I don't think it would have resulted in a squad wipe. They might have knocked out like three models. A new half track has arrived. Enemy forces are capturing our supplies. These squads in the Maxim's blind spot. It looks like it. Flame coming in from the side. Maybe we could even do some attack rounds from this side of the bush. It's just coming in from the other side. A couple of these green ears. Got to be on negative cover out here. Ooh, dodges that rifle nade pretty effectively. Conscripts chopped up those grenades nicely though while they were out of cover. Or even in negative cover. Send orders. Mortar smoking out the machine gun. Big push here from Master Steve. Looks like the uh, anti half track got a bit of damage done. Three models killed on it already, but ran into that rakesh and had to back out for repairs. Maybe do with a sweeper as well on the rear echelon just in case. Good ambush here from the Sturmpies. Through a concussive grenade around the corner of Master Stevie. You could see just started to retreat. A little bit too late though. That was a nasty play from Walnut. Good kill. Meanwhile, we've got a quad out from Kozak. Also quite late on the timing. Push overall from Master Steve. Needs to connect some of this territory though. Now backing away, Rifleman running out of health. Is this next from Kozak? Quad is just about repaired. Oh, that's an aggressive MG42 from Flatchy. No real support here. The Quad could just roll up and knock it out immediately. Uh, it's not doing that though. I think I would have left the conscripts there as bait for the machine gun to stay in position and then blast it. Maybe Master Steve could do that. Doesn't look like he was aware of it though. Be careful here. Not to get fousted. Squad jumps through the building. Get the Faust off the racket and not charging ahead though to take advantage of that.
222 rolling up. Do have a pack on the field now from Flanchy. Not quite in position, but I think the 222 spotted the quad. So he's rolling it up now. The Maxim is here, though. Get some vision of the AT gun. There's a couple bursts on it. AT gun left languishing by Walnut. Quite low on health as well. He's got to be careful. Well, Master Steve smoking these ranges forward. Wow, that's some fast overs. Really early for Walnut. Already on the field upgrade with LMG 11 minutes in. Shows how stable the Axis fuel control has been at this point. Had almost a complete stranglehold on the north and occasionally harassing down here as well. rough for the allies at this stage in spite of both allies going for a light vehicle as well but of course Kozax was rather delayed about a minute and a half off optimal timing a half track rolling through infantry looking to apply pressure good grenade there from the rangers and they knock out the overs Oh, and there we go. Nice D crew on the Raketan as well. Huge plays there. Walnut just getting completely overwhelmed. Trying to just stay in the fight a little bit too long once Steve had uh, dropped that smoke down. Maybe should have been a bit more defensive. But I think the Rangers, they've got that cooked grenade as well, right? So it is one of the harder ones to dodge with that short fuse. Well, it uh, doesn't have the best AoE. More sandbags up from the conscripts, trying to get some heavy cover positions. Uh, I mean, I think, honestly, it's kind of more to the Axis. Axis' favour, but he tries to rifle nade on this side of the cover, expecting the conscripts to be there, but they weren't, and oh my goodness. A T-gun through the centre, a half-track from the other side. That 222 went down so fast. Hit two on the tier half-track. Fresh Raketan's rolling out. Not quite here yet. That's a good time for us to back out for some repairs. A capture point is under attack. Exactly what the Allies needed there. The quad should be operating a bit more in the north. Still trying to battle so hard for the central VP. It's not quite as consequential as getting some fuel at this stage of the game. Good dodge on the grenade this time from Walnut. And operating at a pretty good range. Thompson's a uh, decent mid range compared to most other machine guns, or submachine guns rather, but that was far enough back to be a good engagement for Walnut. Bit of, uh, suppression kicking in here from the half track. Get now they are nice and fast after taking one shot. Panzer four in the build now. OKW Panzer IV popping out at around 14 minutes. Just shows how strong the Axis fuel control has been. So confusing why Kozak is just so tunnel visioned on the center. Whoa, that's a rebuilt 222 from Flatchy. Does not have a spotting scopes option. I'm not sure why he rebuilt that. I wonder if that was a misclick. Very strange. It's not like he needs the VET-1 on it either. The uh, infantry detection is not up against like camouflage units, at least at this stage. I don't think uh, resist camo could be a thing, but yeah. <laughs> Oh, bit of a flank here from Master Steve. He cruised the pack. It's a bit of negative cover around there, which is quite nasty. Of course, that to go down rapidly. But here comes the 222. Got quite a lot of infantry coming in for Flash. He should be able to hold on to this. Panzer four nearly knocking out the Raketan inside the... Um, re-echelon, rather, inside the building. 
her kitten was shooting at the Panzer IV. Stolen her kitten. Oh! Ooh, Master Steve staying in here for too long. Captain goes down, but oh! We did a wipe and return fit too, just popped on those rangers big. Yeah, as soon as they hit that road, health bar raced down. No, under some pressure here, trying to knock out the Panzer IV, expose itself, and uh, should be able to, yep, steal this back. So a few casualties on both sides. Master Steve turning over the Raketan though, definitely bad. It's a, a painful a one. Point. Losing the captain, not the end of the world, but... That's, not, that's the captain weapon crew, not the actual captain. Get hit. Get hit. Yeah, losing the Raketan, that's, that's tough against a super fast medium. We see a Panzer IV coming out now as well. This one uh, not quite on time, of course did go for two, 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 s slowed things down quite a bit. Looks like uh, Master Steve going for a second AT gun, so it looks like he's going to be digging in until the, the Pershing. Is taking our territory. It's done. Briefly the Allies did get double fuel control, not sure how they capped this without uh, tripping all these S-mines. Couple of mines up. From Kozak as well. He's got T-34 about to pop out. Rebuild on the Overs now from Walnut. Hey, half track's gonna have to be very careful now. Get up against double Raketans. Dying one volley. Luckily, both of them are back at base at the moment. For some reason, one of them's not getting fully healed. What's going on there? Ooh, conscripts go down up here. Was that to a Panzer IV shot? Yeah, five kills straight away. All clumped up. Ouch. Good start there for Flatchy. The LC mortar going to work on the Soviet mortar. Rangers got an easy win down the side here. Panzer IV operating through the center. Quite a few mines coming out from Kozak. I think that's a good idea. He still hasn't selected his commander though. Enemy forces capturing supply sector. 34 crushing a few of those S mines away. Oh, they topped up. Could have been a nasty shot. He's off his own sandbags on the process. Panzer IV is rolling up. Not fully repaired. Double AT guns for Flatchy as well. Any half track getting some suppression in. Is a Rickettin very close by? So like Master Steve getting out of here with the re emergence of the Panzer IV. Oh. Play T guns lining up. One of them, in fact, I think both of them popping AP rounds as well. Pins are four getting a bit greedy. Oh, and everything pins. See you later. He popped the AP rounds, gave himself the best chance, and uh, yep. He got the job done in those M1s this time. And this is going to be a major turning point once Master Steve manages to save up. He's close, 60 fuel. Should have the manpower by the time he gets there. That Pershing will be extremely powerful. Looks like a third tech truck coming up from Walnut. So maybe he's uh, planning to go for a King Tiger next. But that will give a large window of time for the Pershing to smash him down. He does have not. Okay, he's not going to go for the third truck in the end. He built in the Panzer IV. Oh, double packs there. Oh, wow, the green has got a Faust off. I thought they were too slow activating it. Oh, and he skates right past the mine. He's just a little bit slow setting up. The T-34 finally penetrates now. It's just connecting once. No conscripts nearby for a snare. I imagine if he hit that mine, it would be a completely different story. Seems like the Panzer IV, though, 
I'm not gonna get the kill. Maybe bounced a few too many shots or missed. I wasn't exactly keeping track, but I'm surprised that T-34 survived. Yeah, half track doing its best down here. Bit of a flank from the rifleman. This guy's running out of momentum. Being too low on health. 2 2 2 though. Allows that Rakitin to stay on the field. Axe is still in the lead on VPs, but not by a huge margin. Panzer IV hitting the field. Not having the best luck with its main gun though. Tank trap up in the centre, providing some cover to the Major AT gun. Connects once. Pops. Give it one, the take aim. Didn't quite get an opportunity for a second shot though. Smoke out from the Acre Command Squad to do some capping. Panzer IV nearby. A couple shoe mines down as well. Good idea for Walnut. Master Steve, still no sweepers at this stage of the game. And here comes the Pershing as well. So even though this should be pretty smooth sailing for the Pershing, he doesn't know if the sweepers could backfire quite horribly. Meanwhile, Kozak with a huge amount of manpower. I'm not sure what he's up to. Be gone for like a second. This Maybe building a howitzer if that's what he wants. Maybe save it for a KV1. Can go for that now though. Yep. Still 700 manpower after that though. Stempires find a uh, few undefended units back here. actually get the decrew on this. Yep. Here comes the Pershing though. Mine somehow didn't trigger there. Pershing misses on that shot. Panzer IV forced away by the double AT guns through the center of the map. One mine triggers on the uh, rangers. Oh! I thought that was home and free. Pershing though able to chase down and get a final shot and it. it's a great one. up here. Allies are definitely asking to run over some of these mines with no sweepers. Let's go playing out for Flatchy. He's actually built a howitzer so I guess he was using that to provide some recon. He's barraging this area around where the Maxim is. success at this stage though. Here comes that KV. These guys haven't dodged whatsoever but the howitzers is not getting the hits. Really poor scatter. Like they're retreating from the mortar, which is doing more damage. Unfortunate start here for Flatchy. Uh oh. Kozak. Yeah, that is not good. That T 34 going down ultra quick to the double AT guns. I mean, I wouldn't even be driving in here now with the KV 1 with the double AT guns revealing themselves. Could be a repeat performance. Luckily, the. Uh, KV bouncing that shot. Second AT gun was slightly out of range as well. Pershing making some moves, coming through the center. Quick decrew on the mortar. Now turning his attention on the MG42. Master Steve has popped combined arms here. 222 dead to the KV1, it looks like. A lot of pressure on Flatchy at the moment. 
Double AT guns lighting up on the Pershing now. That's got to get out of there. AV-1 coming in from the site. Got the planes from Kozak rolling in. Ooh, but almost all the damage shielded by that building. I'm in from the wrong side of the map. Steve lost one of his AT guns in the center, but should be able to recrew it without too much trouble. Echelon did get the sweeper now. They're out back. Not available for repairs. Switches the angle slightly on the howitzer. Also Steve left this here though. I thought he'd grab it with the rangers. They're not that expensive to reinforce. Pretty well targeted, but again, he's just not getting the results. Scatter. MP situation just about equalized. The squad. Uh, back here, hasn't seen much play for a while. Kills now. Guns are full rolling to the north. What happened to that telemine that was up here? Did that get triggered somehow? Is that how the 222 died perhaps? It's parked on his own teller. Uh oh. MG goes down out the back to the mortar. Meanwhile, we've got an ML-20 coming up from Kozak, and he's gone for a Katusha as well. Both pieces of indirect fire back to back. He just had so much manpower spear. Quite an aggressive positioning on the ML-20 as well. You have a dive bomb available from Flatchy, so I don't think this is the right choice. Uh, I think... Has this been revealed? Yeah, he's used both the smoke bombs and the Jaeger command squad, so... Kozak uh, would be aware of the commander if he's familiar with every single one. So he should know that a dive bomb is a possibility and even a you know, recon plane into dive bomb. Best counter commander to a howitzer in the game. Or there with the heat shells. He's four. He comes gonna go in for the mortar, decides against it, but a howie fire from Flatchy in that area. And he's spent his munitions on a dive bomb over here. Who's that not paying attention? Doesn't dodge whatsoever. Still isn't dodged from the howie fire either. Crit on the KV there. Okay, there we go. Master Steve spots a mine. Could attack round it to clear it off here. Double Scots now from Master Steve. Ramping up the indirect fire. He's up against double Rakettens. Needed something. Town handle them. Meanwhile, the uh, third tech truck did come up from Walnut. Still uh, close to 100 fuel away from the King Tiger, though. It's still a way off. Could suffer a lot in the meantime against this Pershing. Armor 10 here. kills so far, nearly Vet 2. And the force still ticking, and the heat shells do give it a bit of an extra kick against the Pershing, where it usually. Uh, Fails. Again, uh, detected a mine up here now. Mm, but as the 
hasn't noticed it or not doing anything about it. There you go, trying to attack ground it, but huge miss. Speaking of misses, same story from the Pershing there. Kachusha in the north going after the Jaeger command squad. What's that? Not 20 doing. It's got two kills. Oh! Five kills. Finds all Flash's units back here. He's trying to put up a command bunker, but oh boy, he's getting pumped by this ML20. Oh boy, and the Ober's dead in the center. Was that to the uh, Pershing? It's up to 12 kills now. I think I had 10 before. Maybe it's to the Scots. So it's got five. Ouch. Yeah, if Walnut was going to go for any other tank, he would have it by now. Panfil or Sturm Tiger. So, definitely going to be the King Tiger. Ended up running into that mine. Nice Steve, pretty much as pop cap limit now, once everything's reinforced. So, not, not many places for him to go. Maybe could invest in some bars for his. Rifleman, or maybe some bazookas on the rear echelon, that's, that's about it. Does have uh, enough munitions to get a few of them. Com engineer's dead down here. Was that to the howitzer? Even kills on it now for Flatchy. It's picked up a bit of momentum. Oh, he's overstaying his welcome here with that Panzer IV. backing away though it had the potential maybe to go for a cheeky m93 extending his range if he wanted to just sit there try fire it one extra shot rely on the pershing's durability didn't want to take the risk understandable oh, look at you shot the back at gun decrewed again for flatchy he's having a real hard time against kozak's indirect fire so Master Steve's popped combined arms again and dodge all sorts of indirect fire in the center. You can see the bonus range there on the Pershing. He's taking full advantage of it. Pershing getting some huge hits in. on that bundled nade. Looks like he's going to roll through the center, try and get rid of these kittens. There they go. We'll do some repairs while capping. Major vetted, so good sight tool. Oh wow, the Yag Panzer. He was so close to the King Tiger. Very strange choice. Like, the Yag Panther's a good counter to the Pershing, but he could have had it out, like, five, five... more than five minutes ago. Oh, no, he cancelled it and went for the King Tiger. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Indecisiveness there. Kozak, meanwhile, going for SU-85. Doesn't quite have the room in his army to get it, though. And he has one engineer for repairs as well, which... There's often a bit of an issue when it comes to repairing up the KV-1. Tends to take quite a lot of damage. Requiring long repair times. Max is trying to cap in the center. Got a bit of air burst barrage from the LFH. Kachusha out the back! Finds the repair pose and the Panther. Gotta be out of action. Oh my goodness! What was that? Was that the ML-20? Nasty stuff. Allied Indirect is going to work here. No dodge either from Flatchy. He's just getting hammered. King Tiger rolling through the center. Trace shots with the uh, Vet 2 Pershing. He's got the commander on it as well. Oh, nice Steve did actually get a mine down with his rifleman up here. Empires, they have the sweepers, but somehow did they not see it? Good, 
grenades. In fact, the rangers waiting behind the smoke, cleaning it up. Oh boy. The wipe here, Master Steve. He's chasing. Oh, he gets it. As a four, it shuts down the rifleman. Should be able to prevent the steel on the machine gun at least. No time to retreat from Master Steve. A couple shots from the Panzer IV. The Pershing's coming out this way though, just to secure the retreat path. Doesn't look like Master Steve really wants to go toe to toe with the uh, King Tiger. Still only has the 1AT gun as well, Master Steve. So he's not super well equipped to deal with that King Tiger. Pushing a bit 3 now though. He's got that turbo rate of fire. And the, he's been trading a few shots. It's 85 on the field now. Or Kozak. After he uh, cleared up a little pop, losing his mortar. Gershon coming in. Double Rakitin's right here though. Fast enough to uh, get away clean though. Tapping through the center now, Kozak. Now he polishes off the mortar. 16 kills. It's doing okay. We're now 20 though. 24 kills. He's done about two fewer barrages as well. A much better impact. And now it looks like it's on uh, counter barrage duty in fact. Wow. Is that the, uh, yeah, the creeping barrage combined up with a little bit of damage from the ML20. And Flatchy loses his howitzer. The enemy is taking what we have secured. I don't think the creeping barrage alone can do that. We Needed the uh, ML20 to soften it up a bit. But yeah, good, great result there from Kozak. The allies about 15 pop ahead. Maybe a bit more, maybe about 20. Actually, might be considering going for it. Oh, it's that mine. This, the sweepers were so close. Maybe this is displaying properly. The tiger taking a few shots. Master Steve's got the combined arms rolling, so the uh, Pershing rattling off shots very quickly. He's got the range advantage as well over the King Tiger, thanks to. Combined arms. The Rakitin's there. I don't think he's going to be able to finish the job. So close, though. Oh, but the SU 85's dead. I was like, where's the SU 85? Maybe that could finish it off. No. Looks like maybe a bit of a dive from the Panther polished that off while the action was going on the other side of the map. And Kozak loses his Zis now as well. It's going to get finished by the double packs. Our opponents are seizing a sector. A couple were. Uh, Shots from the Panzer IV, double Scott Barrage on the machine gun. KV-1 chopping down though. BP still very close, still a huge amount of them left on the board as well. Oh, trying to come in with the heat shells, can two shot the Scots. Yep, there he goes. Nice move there from Walnut. Passing his way out of harm. Here's waiting back at base. Master Steve though did free up a bit of pop cap there, so able to get a Jackson out now will help him out against the King Tiger in the next engagement. King Tiger very close to the one now, so that'll be a real headache. That spearhead. Bring in the smoke. Bring in the dive bomb. That's going to be the end of the ML20. I'd say mission accomplished though. 25 kills. Alongside like majorly contributing to the kill on 
Fletchy's out to... Fletchy kind of paying the price for going for that dive bomb on the mortar earlier. Not having the munitions available for the MR20. End up suffering quite a lot. And there's you making use of the creeping barrage again. I mean, you know, this strafe isn't the best for its price, so it's not like he needs to save munis to use this or anything. So, you know, spam the creeping, I can understand it. There we go, Jackson. Getting a couple shots on the Panzer IV there. Tiger rolling in from the side. And there we go. Hits fit one now. Drops down some artillery. Drops his away with. Yep. There he goes. Echelon creeping ahead. Making sure there are no mines down, but oh. They're staying there. Welcome. Must see. Forgotten about them, it looks like. Loses the rear echelon. He's popped uh, combined arms. Trying to make a bit of a move here. Few shots on the King Tiger. He's got really long vision range with this Major and the combined arms. A capture point is under attack. Spots a few mines with the sweepers there. Oh boy, mortar went down up here. KV1 perhaps. Uh, just trying to go up to the fuel point. Not successful. Precious U85 out for Kozak, though. He's looking for some opportunities. The Panther's coming in, though. Oh, he's back to KV all the way out. Left S85 hanging. Panther 4 might be able to finish it here. Misses. There's a mine there. Hits it this time. Oh, but the SU-85 stopped driving away. Might have been able to get out of range. If it got out of range, it would have been easy to pick off the Panzer IV from there. With the SU-85's range advantage. What was that from Kovac? Kozak, rather. KV-1, I think he just right-clicked really far away, so the KV-1 tried to spin around. Kachusha though, solid. Decrews one of the packs. The Persian's coming up. Maybe looking to uh, finish the job on one of these wounded vehicles. The T-gun hanging on. Persian misses its first shot. Pack bounces though. Gets it on the second. Some smoke out from Master Steve on the machine gun, but she should be able to recover one of these at least. Conscripts oohahing in. MG repositions out of the smoke. Gonna try to steal it away, but two greenies rolling through. Not gonna be able to get the job done. Quad coming up though. Gonna lay down a bit of suppression, maybe clear off the MG42. Pack sets up on it though. Panther wants to finish it. There's more mines up here though. He did take them to the Panther. Maybe an uncharacteristically good shot on the move from long range there. Finishes the job on the quad. Is the quad a vet 3? Not sure. But I might have had the health bonus where it wouldn't have got two shot. Still so many VPs remain, you know. 44 minutes into this game. 260 on both teams. The LMG. So now that the combat engineer's got a flamer, a sweeper, and an MG42. Well equipped. It's a fresh KV-1 from Kozak. There's enough to build something else as well. It's going to be a Zis. I think it's a wise decision. So the Panzer IV's kind of got that 
leaking shell bug which causes the screen to shake sometimes even when they're not active. Panzer IV going for a bit of an expedition here for the Katusha. Maybe he heard this because it's crushing through quite a few trees out the back. Kozak does a slight dodge away. Panzer IV continues on its path though. Finds it and kills it. Good move there from Flatchy. And now Kozak really down the dumps. About 50 pop cap. Roughly half of every other player in this game. Another mine triggered. Maybe uh, Pershing's still a bit too damaged to really assist. It's getting double repaired though. Jumped the vehicle crews out to assist. I asked Searchlight from uh, Walnut, but okay, he's made use of the recon plane on it. it. Does also have that detection mode as well. But it's not going to be providing vision from behind those logs. Doesn't work the same way like it used to. Shoot mine down from these stern pyres. These sweepers on the rebuilt re echelon. You see the mine. Oh, big damage that Raketan getting knocked out fast. Was that the Major's artillery? Oh, no, I think that was the King Tiger's artillery. Either way, the uh, Raketan does get completely destroyed. My sister Steve has now equipped bars on his rifleman as well. Oh, King Tiger. Off to the side. Big move here from Master Steve. He doesn't have munitions for combined arms, but he doesn't need it. Knocks out that King Tiger fast as soon as that Raketan support had been stripped away. And the Panzer IV comes around the corner. Hoping to knock out the Pershing. Unsuccessful. Nearly took down the IR searchlight as well. How quickly things fell apart there for Walnut. Steve with enough anti-tank to get the job done. Stupid dive bomb coming in. No dodge, so this goes down to it. KV-1 coming back in for some reason. Should go down here. Yep. Clumsy stuff there from Kozak. Rebuild on the Katusha from him. Pretty good scatter, catching the pack. Might even get the decrow on it. Good targeting. Oh, Master Steve loses a squad to a rebuilt howitzer from Flatchy. Like maybe his own mind did a bit of friendly fire as well. I remember he had a mind there earlier. Allies have been suffering uh, on the VPs quite badly during this time period. To get themselves back on track in that department, they did do some major damage. And typically, oh, look at that manpower buffer though for Walnut. Even though he suffered huge losses, he looks like he's just gonna wait for the King Tiger to come off cooldown. He could probably go for a Panther, and then by the time the King Tiger comes off cooldown, pretty much have King Tiger resources as well. He's going for a second Raketan into a further store. Raketan, you know, it's a reasonably safe option against the Double Jacksons, I suppose. Drop some smoke to go for the VP capture. Double V3 Rangers. Oh! Panther runs into a mine. The Double Jacksons looking to finish the job here. Major comes around the corner, providing vision. Quick kill there as well. Panzer IV looking for some revenge. Oh, good tiger. Weak point usage there. Jackson goes down. Well done there by Flatchy. They just dropped his artillery in this area. Oh, straight on top of the pack. It's the D crew. Really good luck with the scatter on that first shell. Heads up. The whole weapon destroyed and oh boy. What a 
that goes down to Kachisha as well. 93 points left here for the allies. Bit of LFH fire into the center. The major. Some heavy cover from the Pershing. Coming up to provide some vision. Is this the same? I guess it is the same eye searchlight. Maybe got repaired up. Okay, here comes the King Tiger. Fresh Panther now from Flatchy. Oof. So the LFH nearly knocked out the rear echelon there. Oh, Pershing hoping to knock out the IR searchlight. Might have been a little bit of a bait though. Contago with the heat shells active. The pack from the side bouncing. The Pershing running really good on bounces here. King Tiger just needs one more shot with the heat shells. Oh, but it misses. Lucky break there for the Pershing. That could have been lights out. Meanwhile, Master Steve lost his ranges to the double overs on the far side. I was just thinking he's done a good job keeping both those ranges in life to this point. Just getting back around the corner. Got the Zis up here. Rebuild on the KV-1 again for Kozak. Still has quite a lot of manpower. Could squeeze out one more unit. Another AT gun or squad of guards I think would be optimal. Nate onto the guards trying to do the capping. Got some LFH fire coming down as well. Recon plane in from the IR searchlight. most I think I've ever seen that recon plane be used but it does have a you know a bit of munis to spare on heat shells and the occasional dropping of a coordinated barrage not a huge amount to spin your munis on in that commander so just need some free for those planes or just the IS searchlight abilities in general there from the Jacksons. Dora Kittens are right here though. And so is a fresh Yak Panther actually. Scott slow clearing off this one. This Rakitten very slow to rotate. Could have got a few shots in there. Maybe he could have even killed one of these Jacksons. Panther comes in from the side. T-gun decrewed. Panzer is coming in with a VET disadvantage, so it's going to struggle against the Jacksons, I imagine. So it gets to VET 2. Rebuild on that from uh, Walnut is still available for the recruit here, doesn't need to rebuild it. Oh, it's getting low on VP, slow down to 77. Smoke out, exchanging grenades. Oh, no dodge, but the over's just hanging in there. Pushing on the turbo repairs again. Oof. Close call on the Fox Trinities. Gonna get them neutralized in the north now, the Allies, so they stop the clock. 69 points. Again, Master Steve rolling forwards with the Major to provide vision. Really nicely done. And that allows him to quickly knock out that Jagdpanzer. Again, the Rakitten's right here, but it's just not firing. He's constantly leaving it on camouflage mode. I don't know what he's doing with it. Setting up now. Bounces off the Pershing. The Double Jacksons continuing on their path through. Doesn't set up this Rakitten either. So much damage gone begging there. 
Panthers coming in. One Jackson goes down in return. Honestly, if he's feeling bold, he could have rolled through and killed everything from Master Steve. Pershing's on... Is it on one shot? It might actually survive one regular shot. King Tiger, I think, would kill it from that health threshold, but maybe it would survive one Panther shot. Looks like Master Steve now is going to switch back into the double Scots after smashing all of Walnut's armor. Feels like he doesn't need another Jackson again, which he's probably correct about. Could still equip these uh, red echelon with some bazookas. With extra anti-tank insurance if he uh, wants it. Second Panzer 4 out for Flatchy, trying to go in for the kill on this KV-1, but oh boy, that is some bad pathfinding. Not the way he wanted to extract himself from that situation and uh, loses a Panzer IV because of it. Didn't have munitions, maybe could have dropped some smoke to help with his exit, but... Wasn't an option in this case. Don't think he even had enough munis for the Blitz. But air burst there on the AT guns. This one's quite low. Panther's gonna come around the corner. A bit of pressure with his machine guns. Oh, but he uh, blinded himself with his own airburst. Panzer IV's coming in. Decrease one. But the Panzer IV takes the battering. Could go down here. Oh, bounce and a miss. Lucky break there for Flatchy. Panthers from the side. But it gets blinded by his own airburst again. Does this did get decrewed at least? Meanwhile, oh boy. Not good. For Walnut on this side, he's just getting picked apart with the loss. Oh, was that the crew grenade from the uh, Pershing? Getting squad wiped there. Yeah, I mean, now Walnut's just got absolutely nothing. It's one of those situations where in these random team games, you often see somebody just uh, leave. And they get smashed this, <laughs> down at this amount of units. Still got a lot of VPs left, the Axis, but got to be extremely demoralizing and it largely comes down to his raketen usage just constantly sitting around not uh, not using them when they had opportunities to fire on these Jacksons and Pershings so just forget about using them in camouflage mode I'd say and maybe just bind both of them to a control group so you can just go like what I do you know, control group three right click the AT guns will auto start to uh, go for that target. It's a very convenient way to use them. Oh, knocks out the rear echelon, but Sternpies overstay their welcome trying to go for the cap. That Pershing's just a white machine. 40 kills on it now. Double Scots barraging, and oh, doesn't even manage to get away with that raquette and with a relatively early retreat as well. Double Scott Barrage too powerful and the Pershing coming up to clear off the weapons. He's managed to squeeze out a Panther now and it's got the heat shells. If he finds the uh, Pershing in this condition it could actually get the kill. Jumps all the Scots out though. A triple repairs going on. Looks like maybe he's not on oh, no, us. He's rebuilt the rear shot. the panther now so he's going to go for the anti-air half track panther misses his first shot though a little bit unfortunate he's still chasing got the jackson here pops the heat shells as well and that's an engine crit on the panther now jackson's trying to get out of range so he can pick him apart that 10 range advantage the Major there, maybe providing a bit of vision. The Pershing's getting on the rear armor now. Being slammed from both angles, the Panther. And now he's just got absolutely nothing left. Walnut. Pershing's still healthy. Looks like he's going to turn his attention onto Flatch's forces. AT guns under pressure. 
We've got Howie here. Okay, close to vet two. Pershing's just an absolute monster at this stage, though. Too early on the AT grenades. Could have been an engine crit. It looks like maybe a, a lever. Mm, that's why Master C's called the GG. AFK or something. And that's it. GG. Allies end up taking it late. Yeah, definitely a bit of a struggle from the Allies early on. I think Kozak hitting that quad timing a bit late and not really taking advantage of its mobility, trying to contest that northern fuel, constantly trying to operate in the centre. And yeah, it was a, a, bit, a bit confusing. Master Steve also, you know, a bit of a slow start with the uh, anti-air half-track. Did run into the Rakesson a couple of times early on, slowed down his momentum. And that ultimately led to an extremely fast medium tank from Walnut. First one did die quite easily though. It allowed the Allies back into the game. And ultimately late game came down to Master Steve just picking apart Walnut. Walnut always had the Rakittens like in a reasonable position to return fire but never like brought them in during the fights. They were sitting there in camouflage not shooting or maybe facing the wrong direction slightly. And that generally made the difference in those fights. Pretty good usage of uh, combined arms throughout this match from Master Steve. Got some really good results from that. And really good use of the Major providing vision for his tanks as well. Has uh, made a big difference during a few of those armoured engagements. Well done. As for Kozak, yeah, he was a bit of a master when it came to using the indirect fire. But not so good with his tank control. But, uh, you know, did get a couple mines down, which ultimately I don't think maybe resulted in one kill. Maybe could have been a few more, but that's how it goes sometimes, I guess. But yeah, GG, uh, well played. I was able to take this one late. Well, anyway, guys, wrap on that. If you like Cook Game to be cast by me, details are in the video description below. Otherwise, I'll catch you all for the next thrilling installment. Goodbye and good luck.